We often discuss how the Washington Naval Treaty affected the U.S. Navy and the ships that were built in the decade prior to U.S. involvement in the Second World War. But what we don't discuss often is the effect it had on the ships the Navy was designing and constructing at the time the treaty took effect. While the Lexington-class battlecruisers usually receive the most attention due to their conversions and second chance at life as the aircraft carriers Lexington and Saratoga, the class that was most negatively affected by far was the South Dakota class of battleships. The six battleships of the South Dakota class were originally authorized by the United States Congress in 1917. Three ships, South Dakota, Indiana, and Montana, were scheduled to be laid down in fiscal year 1918, while North Carolina, Iowa, and Massachusetts were scheduled for fiscal year 1919. But due to the evolving German U-boat threat in the North Atlantic, work on the class was postponed initially, so that U.S. shipyards could focus on building destroyers and other escort vessels. This postponement, though, gave the U.S. Navy time to properly analyze and incorporate the lessons learned by the Royal Navy during the Battle of Jutland in 1916. The ships of this class were intended to be the culmination of an aggressive building program aimed at putting the U.S. on par with the Royal Navy, which was considered to be the strongest navy in the world at the time. Initially, the General Board of the U.S. Navy sought to build ten battleships over a five-year period, but Congress, excited by the British victory at Jutland, which confirmed to them the need for more battleships in the U.S. fleet, compressed the board's program into three years instead of five. At Avaii. The first installment of the building program, which were the four ships of the Colorado class, was authorized for fiscal year 1917. Their construction was also delayed due to the need to build smaller vessels for convoy escort duty. And while the Colorado class ushered in the era of the 16-inch gun for the United States Navy, beyond that, they were only slightly improved over the preceding Tennessee class, very much continuing the trend of the standard-type battleships commissioned by the U.S. Navy. This class would also have a victim of the Washington Naval Treaty itself, as the USS Washington, BB-47, would have her construction halted when she was about 75% complete and she would later be sunk as a target ship in 1924. Congress's newfound love for the battleship led the General Board to propose a larger, much more expensive design for the next six ships that were to be built over the following two fiscal years. These would be the South Dakotas, and at 684 feet long overall, with a beam of 106 feet and displacing over 43,000 tons, they would have been the largest warships ever built in American shipyards to that point. The General Board wanted the South Dakota class to retain the 16-inch gun, and inspired by the success of the super-firing triple turret design of the Pennsylvania class, it was decided that the South Dakotas would feature four triple turrets, like Pennsylvania and her sister Arizona. She would have a super-firing pair forward and another pair aft, with her superstructure, funnel, and deckhouse in between. For these turrets, though, the board chose to use the newly developed 50 caliber Mark II gun over the older 45 caliber Mark I, which was in use on the Colorado class. The Mark II was a more powerful weapon than the Mark I. It had a range of almost 45,000 yards when firing a 2,100-pound armor-piercing shell at the turret's maximum elevation of 45 degrees, while the Mark I had a range of almost 40,000 yards firing a similar-sized armor-piercing projectile at a similar elevation. The Mark II, however, had much more punching power, as it was generally able to penetrate several more inches of armor than the Mark I at similar ranges due to its higher muzzle velocity. The Lexington class of battlecruisers, which also fell victim to the Washington Treaty, were to also feature this weapon as their main batteries. South Dakota and her sisters were to have a secondary armament that consisted of 1653 caliber 6-inch guns in single mounts. A dozen of these were in unarmored casemates on the side of the superstructure, with the remaining four guns positioned abreast of the forward superstructure. These had a maximum range of 21,000 yards at an elevation of 20 degrees. Their anti-aircraft batteries were to consist of four 50-caliber 3-inch dual-purpose guns in single mounts amidships. 
These guns had a maximum range of 14,500 yards and could fire at a rate of 12 to 15 rounds per minute. The South Dakotas would have also featured a submerged 21-inch torpedo tube on each broadside. The South Dakotas would have been well-protected ships. They had an armor belt that was 13.5 inches thick, tapering to 8 inches below the waterline. Their armor citadel ran between the fore and aft turret barbettes and protected the vital areas of the ships, the propulsion machinery and magazines. The fore and aft bulkheads that formed the citadel were also 13.5 inches thick, and they had about 6 inches of deck armor and a splinter deck to catch any shell fragments from shell impacts on the main deck. Their main battery was well protected, with turret faces having 18 inches of armor, with another 9 to 10 inches protecting the sides, and a roof 5 inches thick. Their barbettes had the same thickness as the main belt, and their conning tower armor was 16 inches thick on the front and sides with an 8-inch thick roof. They had similar underwater protection to that of the Colorado class, with five layers of watertight compartments separated by three torpedo bulkheads that extended from the splinter deck to the bottom of the ships. The outermost compartment was empty, the three middle ones were used as oil tanks, and the innermost one was also empty. The South Dakotas were powered by turboelectric propulsion and, as such, were equipped with two large steam turbine generators, which drove an electric motor on each of their four shafts. Twelve oil-fired boilers supplied steam to the turbines, which in turn produced 60,000 shaft horsepower, giving them a top speed of 23 knots. They would have had a range of 8,000 nautical miles at 10 knots. The General Board initially wanted these ships to be capable of higher speeds than the current inventory of battleships at the time, in order to counter several faster foreign battleships that had recently come into service. But, they ultimately settled for an increase of only two knots over those previous designs, as they decided that main battery size and armor protection trumped the need for a significant increase in speed. The South Dakotas would have been manned by about 1,500 officers and enlisted men and had a marine detachment of about 75. Construction of South Dakota and her sisters finally began in haste during 1920, with the last ship, Massachusetts, being laid down in early April of 1921. South Dakota and Indiana were laid down at the Brooklyn Navy Yard, while Montana was laid down at Mare Island. North Carolina and Iowa were laid down in Norfolk, and Massachusetts was laid down in her home state at the Four River Shipyard in Quincy, Massachusetts. Unfortunately, though, construction on all ships was halted in early 1922 after the adoption of the Washington Naval Treaty. The treaty sought to prevent a naval arms race among world powers by limiting total capital ship tonnage and the size of individual battleships. The size limit of capital ships that was agreed upon by the treaty's signatories was 35,000 tons and this is what ultimately doomed the South Dakotas. As such, all of the ships in this class would meet their end before ever leaving the slipway after they were canceled in August 1922. At that point, South Dakota was about 38% complete, with the other five ships ranging from 11 to 35% complete. They were all broken up and scrapped on their slipways during 1923, with their main batteries eventually finding their way into the possession of the U.S. Army for use as coastal defense guns. Their boilers were used to modernize the six battleships of the Florida, Wyoming, and New York classes during the mid-1920s, and their armor plating was used to reinforce the armor of several existing battleships as well. The Navy tinkered with the idea of using these guns on the Iowa-class battleships later on, but they were deemed too heavy to use as the Navy was still contending with the tonnage limits imposed by the Washington Treaty. The South Dakota class would have been sleek, powerful, and absolutely marvelous ships that would have been the culmination of U.S. battleship design at the time. Unfortunately, though, with the cancellation of this class and the moratorium placed on new capital ships, the U.S. Navy would have to wait almost 20 years before designing and building another battleship, which certainly put them behind when that time came. The South Dakotas can be summarized as the best that never were, at least until the next generation of U.S. battleships came into being during the late 1930s. Thank you for watching, and as always, 
If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, comment, and subscribe so that we can bring you more content like this.